Good evening. Where are all my ladies at? I am so excited to be here tonight with you. Come on, get comfortable. We're going to enter in. We're going to get blessed by the Lord. It's ladies night. Now, normally we're all dressed up to get ready to go out, but this is ladies night in. So we're in our pajama jammy jams. We're going to relax and we're going to receive the word of the Lord. We love you. We're going to go into worship. I hope you're ready to get your praise on. We're going into worship with Minister Brent Taylor. Come on, put your hands together. Get your girlfriends together. Get on Zoom together. Let's get connected and have an amazing night in the Lord. Take it over, Pastor Brent. God, we thank you right now for all your power, all your presence. Everything we can say yes to this morning, we're excited about who you are and what you're doing in our lives. And so, Lord, we trust you. We ask for your presence, Holy Spirit, just to move right now. Well, good morning, City Church. We're excited that you're here. We're excited that we're in your home. So why don't you just lift your hearts and your hands and say, God, I bless you. No matter what you take me through, no matter where we are, we'll just say yes to your will. We can count on you. In Jesus' name, everybody say. I count on one thing. The same God who never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. He's working all things out. So we say, yes, I will lift you high in my lowest valleys. And yes, I will bless your name. I will sing for joy oh, when my heart is heavy in all my days. Oh, yes, I will. Yeah. We say yes, so oh, we say yes, Lord. I can't hold more things. The same God who never fails. Will not fail me now. You won't fail me now. In the way, the same God who's never late is working all things out. He's working all things out. So we say yes, I will.
want somebody just to be saying again to say, Holy Spirit, come to my house. Come fill the room in my car. But more importantly, let him just fill the room in your spirit, in your heart, in who you are as a person.
is real simple, it says. Saturate me with your anointing. Saturate me with your presence. I've got to have more of your anointing in my life. Saturate. Saturate me in your presence. I've got to have more of your anointing in my life. Saturate me, Lord, today. God, someone needs that right now. Lord, someone needs that here. Your presence in their life. And so, Lord, as we hear from your word, I pray that you would change our hearts to move, to manifest, to hear your power, to hear what you're doing. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Wow, what a powerful worship. Saturate us tonight, Lord. Saturate us as we're sitting in our bedrooms. How do you like my bedroom tonight? I am comfy. I am cozy. I feel the presence of God in here tonight with me. And I know you feel the presence of God at home. I want you to relax and to receive. We're going to go right into the word tonight. I want you to know if you don't see someone online or on Facebook, I want you to give them a bump. Stop for a minute. Make a sacrifice of time and let them know it's ladies night. It's time to receive the word of the Lord. If you need a breakthrough, if you need a change, if you need something different, this is the way we enter in and we get it. We go and get what God has for us. Amen. So I'm ready for the word tonight. Are you ready for the word? Where are all my ladies at? I need some thumbs up, some hearts going up. I need to know that you're with me tonight. I'm used to having my sidekick, my partner Bishop with me, but we're in this, the ladies together tonight. He's online with us. Some of our security and our men that come to the, the women's night out. I just love you and I welcome you as well. We just want to receive what God has for us tonight. So we're going to go to the word of the Lord tonight. I want you to turn with me in your Bibles to the book of John, the 15th chapter. Very familiar passage of scripture, but this is going to be the premise on which we lay our bricks tonight. We're going to receive from this scripture tonight. Uh, John 15 verses 1 and 2, and it reads as this. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it. Oh, come on, somebody. That it may bring forth more fruit. Come on, somebody. I want you to touch your chest and tell yourself, I'm about to produce more fruit in my life. Listen, I read this scripture. It hit me right between the eyes as I was thinking about you. Look, let me get comfortable and lean in a little bit and talk to you tonight. The word of the Lord is, is powerful. It's quick. It's powerful. It's alive. Don't ever think it's just a book or just black words on a page or red lettering on a page. This is a life altering word that can change all of your thinking, can change your circumstances. Now, as I read this scripture, I started thinking about people's response and reaction to this season that we're in and not just this season some of the other things that we're facing you know some of us are struggling with being our children's teacher now we have a newfound uh, uh, grace and patience for our educational system it's not easy it's always easy judging what somebody else does until you're doing it come on can I get a witness on that but as I was thinking about this you know it says you know that God purges or he cuts away from the vine. And I know we all think that that scripture, you know, if you read it really quickly, you'll think he's saying he cuts away what's dead or not producing. But I'm here to challenge you tonight 
on a different perspective because when you really look at what the word says, it says that God will uh, purge it and take away from the vines that are bearing fruit. Oh, wait a minute. It says he, he, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he'll take it away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he'll purge it so that it may produce more fruit. Hmm. See, a lot of us are going through this pity party in this situation where we think that God is punishing us. God is, we did something wrong and you spent late night up laying in your room by yourself, tears running down your cheeks. You've, you've shut yourself in your laundry room and cried. You go in the shower. Come on, ladies, you know what I'm talking about. You don't want to know people to know that your feelings are hurt. So you'll get in the shower and turn on the water and shut the door and, and shed your tears in there. So the kids don't see your frustration. Your husband doesn't see your frustration, but God sees and knows everything. Aren't you glad about it? Aren't you glad that he knows when you're crying in quiet? Don't you, aren't you glad that he hears the silent screams of a woman? Come on, somebody. So this scripture right here, I want you to know tonight, if you feel like God is cutting on you and things are coming against you, that you're being punished. Listen, you're not being punished. You're being pruned. Come on, somebody. I want you to look at yourself. Look, you need to get a mirror. Look over at yourself. If you're sitting in the room by yourself, look over at yourself. Girl, he's talking to me. I'm telling you, you are not being punished. Touch yourself. I am not being punished tonight. I am being pruned. Pruning. A pruning is taking place in the body of Christ. A pruning is taking place with the women of God. Listen, women are an intercessors. Women will work. Women will come after God. Women are faithfully committed. Listen, you are committed to a king who hears you, sees you, and knows what you're going through. You are not being punished tonight. I can't get that across to you tonight enough. The pruning that you're going through is not punishment. I'm going through this, not because I did something wrong, but I'm going through this pruning because I did something right. You're doing something right. Listen, the word of God says that he purges and he prunes the vine that has already produced. So often we want to stay in a victory season. So often we want to stay in, you know, on that mountaintop, so to speak. We want to stay in that place where we feel successful. But listen, God wants you to know that that one success that you experienced is not the last success that you're going to experience. God has greater things for you to accomplish. He has greater victories for you to champion. But you've got to understand you can't fall prey to feeling victimized by God and punished by God when actually what you're going through is his plan and his process for your life. Because in this next season, you're going to need more fruit. You're going to need to produce more than you did yesterday for your tomorrow. Come on, somebody. So the vines are pruned after the harvest. See, I love how God uses something so practical and he makes it spiritual. The vines are pruned after the harvest, after the victory. You know, me and my husband have been through different seasons and I always wondered, see this answered a question for me. This answered that question, God, why me? Why me? And you know what the Holy Spirit asked me one time? Why not you? Why not you tonight? If you're asking yourself, God, why me? I'm being faithful. I'm paying my tithes. I'm, I'm being a good wife. I'm being a good mother. I'm being a good steward over what I have, Lord. Why me? Why are you cutting on me? Why does it feel like everything in my life is falling apart? Why does it seem like you're taking away when I'm being faithful? Why me? Why? I'm being good. How many have ever cried that out? God, I'm good. The Holy Spirit's asking you tonight, why not you? Why not you think about that for a minute while I take a sip of my water? I think I got some of my bedroom popcorn. You know, I know you ladies got pop popcorn. I got my popcorn here too. Look, look, I came, pre I said it's a pajama party. You can't have a pajama party without some popcorn. Come on, somebody. So while you're asking yourself, why me? Why not you? Why not you? It's because you've been faithful. It's because you've been dedicated. It's because you're being committed to what God is. It's because you're being obedient. All of these things require us to be pruned in the next season. After the harvest comes and you feel like you're a champion on the mountaintop, 
all of a sudden some things start getting cut away. What is going on? Well, I'm going to tell you tonight what's going on. You're not being punished. You're being prepared to produce. You're not being punished. You're being prepared to produce more in your life. Listen, those little things that get cut off from our life in the vineyard, they call those the suckers. I know some of you are laughing right now, but it's an actual fact. Those little shoots that come off the vine that need to be cut away are called suckers. How many suckers you got in your life tonight? Hey, come on, ladies. Where are you at? Give me some thumbs up. See, those little suckers, what they call them, those little suckers have a tendency to grow downward toward the soil. Mm, I feel this. Come on. <coughs> It has a tendency to grow downward toward the soil, trying to tap back into the dirt where there are bugs, where there are fungus, where there are molds. And if those suckers are allowed to remain on the vine, it will try and tap back into the dirt where it originated from. I know I'm preaching to somebody right now. I'm feeling this right now. Where it originated from, and it be, can become infected and in essence destroy the growth that has taken place over time. The things that we're, be, we're producing and bringing forth will actually become infected and destroyed if the suckers aren't cut off from your life. If you're not pruned, you'll actually start to go backwards. See, God is a divine miraculous, faithful father. He is a good steward over his vineyard. And listen, we're a part of the vineyard. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. With him and connected to him, we can accomplish anything. Listen, when God begins to cut those suckers off in your life, some of those suckers are people. Some of them are time robbers. Some of them are distractions. They are distractions pulling you back to where God delivered you from. God didn't call you to go back. He called you to go forward, moving forward in Christ, conquering every place you put your foot. It will be yours. Listen, God has pruning as a part of our process. It's actually an honor to be pruned by God. Think about that for a minute. He chastens or he corrects. He disciplines who he loves. I know it doesn't feel good when it's happening. Listen, but it's necessary. No good parent wants to spank their child, but a good parent has to discipline their child because their child will go wayward Listen, how much more does your father in heaven know that you need discipline and structure so that you don't go wayward? Think about your life before you had Christ in it. Oh, I want to bury my head in this pillow right now. Listen, think about your life before you had Christ in it. It was jacked up. Oh, come on. Don't try and get all sedity with me now and try and pretty up all your mess. Listen, without Christ, we went wayward. But with Christ, he's aligning us. He's causing us to, to stand upright. Listen, when those suckers are cut off from your life, do you know that's what it does to the vine? It allows the vine to continue to grow upward straight. Come on, higher. How many want to go higher in 2020? How many want to do more for God in 2020? How many want to accomplish greater things in 2020? How many want to get that bucket list out and say, man, I have been so blessed by God. I want to rewrite my bucket list because I have accomplished everything on it in my life. Listen, I had to rewrite my bucket list and I'm not ashamed of it because God took what I asked for and he allowed me to accomplish it before I turn 50, before, see our plan, our way is not God's way. And a lot of times we think what's going to take us a lifetime to do with God. It can take us seasons, moments, weeks, days. Listen, it doesn't have to be a whole lifetime, but you have to allow God to take you through the process of pruning so that you're able to produce in the way that God wants you to produce. Come on, can I get some thumbs up? Come on, give me some love. I know sometimes you don't like what I'm saying, but you need to hear what the word of the Lord is saying. This is the only way we're going to bring about change. This is the only way we're going to be able to look at our circumstances through a different set of lenses. Look, I'm not minimizing your hurt. I'm not minimizing your pain. 
going through pruning hurts. Look at somebody and say, ouch. But you know what I learned? I learned to say, ouch, hallelujah. Ouch, hallelujah. When God is bringing about pruning and correction, there is a praise that you have to attach to it because you know that all things are working together for your good. Why? Because you love the Lord and you're called according to his purpose. You have to start looking at all the pain that you're going through in your life, the frustration that you're going through in your life with a different set of eyes. You've got to look at it through the word of God. You've got to look at it through the plan of God. You've got to look at it through the purposes of God. You've got to look at it through your destiny. Come on, you can't uh, finish the race in the state that you were in when you started training. You have to be trained. Listen, I know you ladies hear me talk about running all the time. You know how much I don't like it. But I will tell you, I couldn't run a cross country race without first running shorter distances. It's called endurance. Endurance has to be built up. Endurance. God is putting you through some training so that you can endure the duration of the race. He doesn't want you to start something that you can't finish. He called you to it so that you could accomplish it. With him, all things are possible. Are possible. With Christ Jesus, we can do all things. Amen? So let's look at this word. God is honoring you. He said, if you are faithful with a little, you would be faithful with much. That's Luke 16 and 10. Listen, if you've proven yourself faithful in the previous season that you've been in and a harvest You've produced fruit in your life. You've manifested things for the kingdom and for the glory of God. God has, look, you got God's attention. Crying, whining, kicking, screaming, that doesn't necessarily get God's attention. What will get God's attention is obedience and bringing him glory. Glory is not just a song. Glory is a lifestyle. Glory is living in the midst of of a, a situation and still raising your hands and praising God. Glory, bringing God glory is, is shouting out. It's, it's his name, Jesus. I believe, I believe that all things are possible. Look, I don't care what the doctor said. My king says by his stripes, I am healed. Come on. You got to give God glory in no matter what season you're in. And when you begin to produce, see, we're a God of increase. We serve a God of increase. I know a lot of people don't like to hear this, but it's the truth. We serve a God of increase. God doesn't want you to be broke, busted, and disgusted all the time. God wants you to prosper. Look, it's not just financially. He wants you to have joy, unspeakable joy. He wants you to have peace, unspeakable peace. He wants you to have so much that it oozes out and it overflows. It run, Listen, that word that Minister Brent sang, saturate me, saturate me in your anointing. Saturate means to be dripping, soaking wet, where it's just coming off you. Saturated in the presence and the power of God. Producing, you're producing so much. I don't know about you, but I grew up in the country. I'm a little old country girl, played in the ditches, ran on dirt roads with no shoes. Listen, if you drive down country roads and you see an orchard, you can see an apple orchard in the fullness of its harvest and the branches are hanging so heavy with fruit. Look at, look at this. It's not a big tree. The tree is not huge. You don't even have to climb it. The trees that are producing an, an, a, a, an astronomical amount of fruit are the ones that are low to the ground and who have been pruned. Oh, come on. You don't have to be big the way the world says be big, but you got to be big in God's eyes. And when you're big in God's eyes, it's because you say, here I am, Lord, I surrender. God, cut away whatever needs to be cut away out of my life. Prune me, Lord, so that I can produce more for you. It's those little short, stubby apple trees that there's so much fruit on one branch. You'll stop and look at it and in amazement and try and figure out how can this tree that is so small hold so much fruit? Listen, people are looking at your life and say, how are they able to do what they're doing? How are they able to produce the way they're producing? 
I'm able to do it because I surrendered my life and I presented it a living sacrifice before God, holy and acceptable. And I said, here I am, Lord, prune away, cut away, God. If there's anything in me, oh God, that is not pleasing in your sight, God, God, remove it, cleanse it from me. I don't need it. Anything that's not from God, you don't need it. Look at your girlfriends out. You don't need it, girl. People try and tell you what you don't need, but you have to come to a revelation of what does not have value in your life. Some of you are hanging on to some things that are called suckers. They're tapping you of your energy. They're tapping you of your joy. They're tapping you of your peace. They're tapping you of your resources. They're tapping you. They're tapping you. They're tapping you. And you're crying out to God and God's saying, move your hand and let me prune your life. Stop protecting what needs to be cut off. Let it go. Come on, somebody. Come on. Your pruning proceeds promotion. Listen, you want a promotion. You've been crying out, God, I want to do more for you. God, I want to be more effective for your kingdom. Your pruning precedes your promotion. Without pruning, there's no promotion. Come on, somebody. God's not waiting. Come on. We're not, we're not really waiting on God. God's waiting on us. He's saying, let me get you to the next level. Let me get you to the next stage of your life. But it has to be pruned. It's part of your promotion tonight. Look at, I know the confusion comes when you want to, you want to stay, you want to stay victorious. You know, everybody always wants to feel good, but sometimes being productive and producing doesn't feel good. How many have ever said, you know what? I want to get myself. I want to get healthy. I want to get in shape. It doesn't feel good. How many want to start saving money? Listen, doesn't feel good because you have to put restraints on yourself. You have to, you have to put uh, boundaries in your life. You have to be disciplined. Come on, somebody. Nobody likes to be disciplined. Nobody likes restraints. But listen, if you want to accomplish all the things that are in your heart, for God, for yourself, for your family, for your children, for your marriage. Listen, this principle goes across the board. This principle goes across the board. <clears throat> you have to discipline your, yourself. It can't always feel good. That's what's wrong with the body of Christ right now. The church, I should say. Not the body of Christ, the church. Listen. We go to buildings and we want to be made to feel good all the time when sometimes really what you need is somebody needs to rebuke you. Somebody needs to bring correction to you, but nobody wants to, to go through that kind of pain and that kind of situation. But listen, it's necessary for growth. It's necessary for strength. It's necessary to produce. You want it, then you have to be willing to go through the process. Amen? Listen, a lot of times we, we want to stay in that victory mode, but the reality is there's another battle in front of us. You want to keep focusing on the game that you won yesterday. You want to keep focusing on the thing that you defeated yesterday. Look, what you defeated yesterday is dead and under your feet. You can't, you can't glory over it forever. You got to keep moving forward. You got to let go and move forward to the next battlefield. Listen, even in the sports arena, you can't stay the champion every year without going through the season. You gotta go through the season. You gotta meet your adversaries on the battlefield and conquer them again. Yeah, you conquered them yesterday, but you gotta conquer them again. And every time you win the victory and God comes in and steps in on your behalf, you become stronger. Your mind begins to change because God wants to give you more. This is not punishment, people. Going through the pruning is because there's more fruit to be produced in your life. You need to touch yourself and say, I want more. Listen, there's nothing wrong with wanting more. There's nothing wrong. You need to say it out loud. I <clears throat> want more. I want more out of my life. I expect more out of my season. I want more out of my finances. I want more out of my career. I want more out of my relationship of God with God. Don't you think that is sweet sounding to God? God, I want more of you. God, I want more. I want you to trust me more. 
I want more. And when you cry out to be used by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, listen, when you cry out like that, he said, I hear you and I'm responding. I'm responding not just by protecting and coaxing and, and blessing you, but there's a season of pruning. But we have to remember, I need to keep saying this to you tonight. Pruning is not punishment. Pruning proceeds promotion. Come on, pruning proceeds you producing abundantly. This is what God wants for us tonight. He wants us to say, God, cut away everything. Cut away every distraction. Cut away everything that's been robbing me of more fruit. There's more fruit to be produced tonight. God wants you to aim high. He wants you to aim high tonight. Listen, I'm not going to minimize your reality. I need to keep saying this to you tonight. I'm not going to minimize your reality and say that your situation doesn't hurt. Look, it hurts when people walk out on you. It hurts when people betray you. It hurts when people lie on you. It hurts when people disappoint you. It hurts. It hurts. It's okay to say I'm hurt. Listen, for so long, we as the women of God stop telling people we're hurt. We think it's a sign of weakness or a badge of honor. But listen, there's something I love about Job, the book of Job. Job never minded letting people know how much it hurt. And he never minded it. He said, though God slay me, look, he didn't ignore the fact that he felt like God was punishing him. He didn't ignore the fact that his body was covered with boils and that he was grieving the loss of his children and, and all of his, his produce and, and everything that, and it didn't, he didn't deny the fact that his wife wasn't even there to comfort him and console him. Those things hurt. It's lonely. It's, it's painful. We have to deal with the reality of our pain before we can understand the process of pain in our life. Pain happens to us all but all of us don't handle it the same way. Suffering happens to us all. Look, we've all lost loved ones. We've all went through suffering of some kind, but it doesn't have to be pushed to the backside and say, you know what? I, I'm not affected by that because I'm so spiritual. Listen, come on, you're a human being. Jesus wept. He doesn't expect you not to cry. We have to deal with the reality of pain. Pain is real. Pain is real. And when you understand that pain is real, then, then we can get ahead of this thing and we can start using what the devil intended for evil for good. How do we do that? First, we recognize and we say, you know what? That hurt me. I was a woman that had a difficult time saying those words because I thought it meant that I was weak. But you know what? When you're able to articulate to somebody, you hurt my feelings. You disappointed me. You betrayed me. Whatever it is out of, uh, that you can share that pain or that disappointment without becoming angry and irrational. Listen, God wants us to be able to respond to situations and stop reacting to them. Listen, reacting. What does reacting mean? Reaction is out of your flesh. It's impulsive. It's out of your feelings. Something happens and you want to lash out. You don't even hear the conclusion of what's transpiring in the conversation for your anger rising up and lashing out. Automatically, you want to get a defensive wall up and you want to lash out whoever's trying to hurt you. But listen, God doesn't want us always to, to react. He wants us to learn to, to, to respond. The word of God says to be slow to speak and quick to listen. Slow to speak and quick to listen. Respond to your situations. Take it all in. Doesn't mean you have to give an answer today. Doesn't mean you have to have a rebuttal today. Some of you are trying to think up your, uh, of your comeback before you even hear the, the, the full statement that's being said. You're not even listening anymore. Can you discipline yourself enough to listen to the totality of what's being presented to you before you start trying to figure out what your response is going to be, what your reaction is going to be. God wants you to be slow to speak. Listen, I had to learn how to do this. If my husband would hurt my feelings, instead of getting angry and lashing out like I used to, oh, come on, somebody, y'all don't want to act like y'all got angry. Come on, be real, keep it real tonight. Keep it real. Ain't nobody looking at you. I can't see you. You can see me. I'm going to keep it real tonight. Listen, 
Everybody went through those seasons. We don't know how to always handle our pain, handle our suffering. So we lash out, we, we, we react out of our feelings and our emotions. But what God taught me to do is to take my pain, take it to him first. That's not always easy, especially for somebody who, who considers themselves to be independent. It's not always easy to control, have self-control over your emotions. Take your pain, take it to the Lord. Listen, if you, you don't know how to take it to the Lord, then you just got to get away and deal with it yourself. You know what I learned to do when I was like, if you want to know if I'm really hurt, you'll see me walking. <laughs> Come on. I got so hurt one time. I must have walked five miles. I think I walked the skin right off my feet. Uh, Y'all think I'm kidding. Come on, somebody. The pain was so unbearable. The betrayal was so unbearable for me. I had to just walk. I had to just keep walking and walking because I didn't know how to respond to it. I didn't want to react anymore. I didn't want to act out of my flesh anymore. Listen, I had to get alone with myself and my feelings. I had to get alone with God. I had to cry out to God so that I could articulate to the person the pain that they had, had caused in my life. Listen, you get more results when you're able to respond instead of reacting. God doesn't expect you just to suffer silently. He acknowledges that your pain is real. He acknowledges that what you're going through hurts. But pain is not in vain. Pain can produce in your life. The cutting away of those suckers off of your vine can produce fruit in your life. I've become a better person because I know how to respond now. I've become a better wife, a better mother, a better friend, a better daughter, a better child of God, a better leader because I've learned to have control over my pain and understand that there's got to be more to this than just hurting. I don't want my pain to be wasted. I want it to produce in my life. How do you do that? First of all, you got to learn how to respond to it. Take reaction off the table. I'm not going to react anymore. I'm going to respond. I'm going to articulate how I feel. And that might take some discipline, some time to learn how to do that. And you might only get one word out. I'm hurt, you know, who <laughs> you might not even be able to say a whole lot to ever hurt you, but they have to know the pain they caused you. Then <clears throat> what you have to do is you take the word of God and you put the word that he's got for your life. Look, God may have spoken some promises to you. How does this suffering that I'm going through, this cutting away that I'm going through, how is it uh, connected to God's plan for my life. What is God going to get out of this? What am I going to get out of this? How am I going to grow from this thing? There is truth in the fact that if you take the truth of your reality and the revelation of God's word, then there's going to be a producing out of your life of your suffering. Your suffering will begin to make sense. Look, you're not always going to get a perfect answer or understanding of why. The answer that I've settled with is, why not? Why not me, Lord? I called out to you. I wanted to be used by you. So why not me? Why, why am I exempt from going through this? If you're with me, God, I can go through it all. I can go through anything. The suffering that you went through on the cross, you know, I, I watch the passion of Christ and I look at Mary sitting at the feet of Christ in that scene where she digs her hands into the gravel and she just squeezes I can so relate to that pain as a mother. I can't even imagine, but I, that emotion coming through that acting just blesses me and teaches me how to deal with suffering. Get the revelation. She knew that her son was going to go to the cross. She knew that he was coming to redeem mankind, but to actually go through it, was a whole nother thing. See, you can know where you're going and know what God has planned for your life, but then actually going through the steps of it is a whole nother thing. But I want you to know tonight that you can go through it. Why? Because your pruning is not punishment. 
your pruning that you're going through, it's, it's meant for you to produce. Why do you need to produce? You need to produce because on the other side of your pruning, you are going to get promoted. Come on, somebody. You're going to produce. You're going to have a harvest for the next season to accomplish what God has for you. You're going to have a lesson. Why did I need to go through this suffering so that I'm able to minister to somebody else who's going through the same kind of suffering and let them know through my testimony, through my life, through my witness, that there is a plan and a purpose for God. You're going to come out on this thing stronger than when you went in. You're going to come out of this thing better than when you went in. You're going to come out of this thing victorious. I know you don't feel victorious in the middle of your suffering, but I want to encourage you tonight and let you know that you're going to come out victorious on the other side of this thing. Come on, somebody. You have to learn, learn that you have to push beyond your carnal, come on, outlook. I know the first thing you want to do is respond to what you see and what you hear. But you got to learn to push beyond your carnal outlook of your situation. And then you need not only to deal with your reality, you need a revelation of it. This allows for a divine perspective. Sometimes we need God to step in and give us a whole nother perspective on what we're going through. I can't tell you how many times the Holy Spirit would minister to me and I'd have tears rolling down my cheeks and I'd be going, but I don't understand God. And he'd begin to minister to my spirit or give me a scripture or I'd hear a word on television and it would speak directly to my situation and things would begin to make sense. Did that take away the pain? No, nope. but it made sense. I still had to go through the pruning. I still had to go through the process. Why? Because I chose to. I could back out, I could pull out and, so to speak, go through around the mountain again. But I said, nope, I'm going to learn the lesson. I'm going to allow God to cut whatever he's cutting off of me in this season of my life so that I can produce and go to the next level. See, God wants us to shift. He wants us to shift from being a victim. He wants us to shift from merely surviving. He wants us to shift and understand that we are going to be conquerors. When we come out of this thing, we're more than conquerors. When we get through this pruning, I'm going to be better than when I went in. You got to shift your thinking. You got to shift the way you see your suffering. Listen, pruning is not punishment tonight. When those little suckers get cut off, Come on, it's just another little sucker cut off. Cut off my life. Gotta go. Gotta go. You'll start to rejoice when pruning comes because you know on the other side of it, God's going to give you more. You'll change your perspective when you go through the season and it is going to be a blessing. Why? Because we're aiming higher. I know when it cuts off, I'm going to stand up straight. I'm going to square my shoulders. I'm going to set my chin like flint to the heavens. And I'm going to press forward into the things that God has promised for me. Because what God has for me, it is for me. Nobody can take it. Nobody can stop it. Nobody can deny me. Because when God gets me ready and I can step into that, that next season, I will lay hold of it. I'll obtain it. I will conquer it. I'll glorify God in it. I will honor him in it and I will be blessed. Church, ladies, I don't know what you're going through tonight, but I'm going to pray with you tonight to let you know the pruning has a purpose. God's pruning has a purpose. Listen, I'm going to, I'm going to close with this for you tonight. Bishop and I went through a really tough season <clears throat> and you know me, I keep it real. I keep it transparent. And we had sacrificed we had given, we had let go of so much, not just uh, family and friends and uh, resources, finances, careers. We had let go of so much to be obedient to God, only to find out because we wouldn't compromise, we wouldn't waver in our faith. All of the sudden, everything that we sacrificed for, it looked like it was being removed from our life. It looked like it was being taken away from us. And we felt like we were being punished. We felt like, God, how could you do this to us? I've, I've done everything you've asked me to do. I've given everything that you've required me to give. I've been faithful only to have you 
strip everything away and leave me out here? Leave me out here hanging? Come on, somebody. You ever felt like God left you hanging? And I remember we called a really good friend of ours, Pastor Jake Gaines. Man, thought we were going to get some inspirational words and some encouragement. And we called Jake. <clears throat> he laughed at us. He laughed. He said, did you really think God was going to leave you here when you have so much greater on your life? Did you really think that God was going to put you here and that was going to be the end? He was going to let you settle in to a, a season where you just kind of drifted through life? No, that wasn't God's plan for our life. He said, God is doing all of this not to punish you, not because you did something wrong, be because you did something right. And when we got that revelation, even though we didn't fully understand the scope of it all, even though our minds still couldn't wrap around it, but what wrapped around it was, we began to receive the plan of God for our life. It wasn't so much what we wanted, but it was what He wanted. And when we did that, and we shifted and we followed, God's will for our life. Listen, church, I wouldn't be here tonight talking to you. I wouldn't be who I am today. All of that, all of the pain and the suffering that we've been through has helped mold us and shape us into the men and women of God that he required us to be. Some of you envy men and women of God. You look, some of you might look at me and say, man, Pastor Kim, I want to be like you. I want to be strong. I want to be like you. Some of you might look at Bishop and say, oh, I want to be like Bishop. Listen, you don't know the pruning process that we've been through. You don't know the pain and the suffering that we've been through. You don't know what it feels like to have everything cut off your life. Maybe you do tonight. Maybe I'm talking to you. Maybe that's the season that you're in. Well, I'm here to tell you, don't grow weary in well-doing. For in due season, if you faint not, come on somebody, don't give up now. Aim higher, stand up straight, square your shoulders, and hold on to God tonight. I'm going to pray with you right now. If you have a prayer request, send it in, ladies. Mighty God, in the name of Jesus. God, I need you to touch every woman where they are right now, God. Those of you that are, uh, uh, God, just struggling tonight. Those of you that are going through frustration and you anguish, you don't understand why you have to be pruned. Listen, I'm praying for you. I'm believing God's going to touch you where you are. I'm believing this word that I spoke is giving you revelation on your situation. You're not alone tonight. I love you so much and I'm so glad you're here. Uh, look who just walked in my bedroom. I had to make an appearance. I had to. <clears throat> You know how I show up to all of your women's He's a crasher. I'm looking for the food. I come, I walked in the room, there's no food. So, I'll settle for some popcorn. I love you. Just wanted to let you know that. God bless you. <laughs> Go get it, Pastor Kim. I love you guys. I love you. Look, he can't help himself, but I love you tonight. I want you to be blessed. I want you to know that you're not alone in whatever season you're in. God is with you. I'm with you. You have friends. You have family. I love you. God bless you. Good night.